Hello there! Glad you could join me on this little series where we paint the minis from the ridiculously cute adventure board game Stuffed Fables. Last time we painted the minions at a decent tabletop level, but this time it's the heroes, but at a slightly higher standard. There's six of them, each with their own skill and personality. Since the minis are protecting a girl from the evil nightmares, the goal is for them to look cute and fierce. So to that end, I'm not gonna push the contrast too high, so they look soft and round and cuddly. And I'm also gonna try and make the paint job very clean. That kid's taking care of the toys. Now with all that said, let's get to the painting lab. So I'm gonna start this project with the airbrush. It's gonna speed things up a lot for me, but it will also help create that soft look I want. You can do all of this by brush, of course, and I'm gonna show you that later on, but it's just gonna take a bit more time. I base coat all the plushies with a different color. I pick a dark brown for Theodora and Stitches, a light brown for Lionel and Flops, a magenta for Peggy, and I leave Flumpy with the dark gray primer. I love these names. Then comes the zenithal highlight. I pick a lighter color than the base one, but not too light. Again, I want the contrast to be soft here. I spray the light paint from above to simulate how the sunlight would hit it. I pick an orangish brown for Theodora and Stitches, the same one I use as a base for Lionel and Flops. For those two, I pick a mustard yellow color. I take a light gray for Lumpy, and I add some pale flesh to the previous magenta for Peggy. Using a mix here is going to make my job a tad harder later, because I forgot to write down the proportions. And that's all the zenithals done, which to be honest is like 70% of the paint job. I've only done airbrush work so far, but now it's time to pull out the paintbrush. So for the rest of the video, I'm going to be putting stitches aside here. Because while I'll be using similar techniques to the one used on the other heroes, he's got so many different colors that I'm going to do him in a separate session. A very chill one, I might add. For the other heroes, I'm doing the same process but with different colors. I take the last card I used for my zenithal and go over the top facing parts of the mini with it, using a sort of stippling motion. I use the same color because this makes for a very soft and natural highlights for the zenithal. Since the airbrush doesn't give us a full opacity with the color we use, if we go back to it with a paintbrush, we get that full opacity. So it still registers as a highlight, but it also removes the airbrush look a bit, and it makes that color pop. It's like a 3 for 1 offer. To know where to place the highlights, I just tilt the mini so I view it as if my eye was the light source. And I just hit the spots that are facing my eye, just like we did with the airbrush. When that's all done, I go for a final highlight color for my plushies. If I don't have it, I just add enough white to the previous one. I use this final color sparingly, usually only on the head. With that final step on the main body, we have a very solid base going. That didn't take a lot of time. You could honestly do all of this in a single session if you're not a slow painter, like me. Now that the bodies of our heroes are done, we're gonna add in all the things they carry and wear. We're gonna do it in a simple and similar way, and that's layering. I'm mostly not using transparent paints here, like contrast paints, because they can make things look a little dirty. And remember, we want a clean paint job here. So for each item, I pick three colors, a mid-tone, a shadow, and a highlight. You can obviously get those by mixing paints. I begin by base coating things with my shadow colors. Then I grab my mid-tone and look at my mini. 
everything that faces the light or is parallel to the light I hit with my midtone. Then I grab my highlight and I do the same thing, but only hitting the parts that are facing the light. For the parts that are not facing the light, I do a small glaze ending at the top where I want most of the pigments to go. Or I don't even worry at all, depending on the item. If I think my contrast is too high, I bring it all back with a small glaze of my mint tone. some items like Flop's bow or Lumpy's hammer, I even used just two colors. They're just not important enough to warrant three. At this stage the little plushies are almost finished. I just add the small details like the stitches or the eyes. Those items is when I pull out the contrast paint. For the eyes I even do a small gem effect. Black base, grey at the bottom, white dot at the top, it looks great. I do a purple base and a black rim, then I vanish everything before I do the small metal bits. For them I do a dark base coat by mixing Vallejo Metal Color Steel and some Payne's Grey ink, then I highlight the top facing part with the Vallejo Metal Color Silver and pretty much call it a day. And that's our five heroes done! Now let's get on to stitches. As I said, this guy has too many colors going on to paint him in one airbrush go, like the other plushies. So I'm gonna do him all with a paintbrush and hopefully manage to keep that softness I'm looking for. First, I start blocking out the different colors on him. I use a gray for the white bits, a light brown for the yellow bits and a dark brown for the brown bits. For the hat, I want a desaturated purple. So I take a dark purple color and add brown to it. Color wheel opposites, baby. For the cape, I intend to use contrast colors on it as an experiment, so I leave it be for now. Now I start layering in my three steps method, the very one I used on all the equipment of the other plushies. It's my cheating method to get some volumetric highlights. Again, we get three colors and we pick up the lighting angle. Dark colors for everything hidden from the light, mid tone for parallel surfaces, and highlights for everything facing the light. 
If you're struggling with volumetric highlights, I would find it a great method to learn it. I do the same with the cape, but I use an off-white color instead. Then I hit it with Blood Angel Red uh, Contrast, before going back over it with a mix of contrast and plus some off-white. That's honestly a big part of mini done. I paint the pencil in a bright yellow, just to differentiate it from Stitch's golden yellow. Off-white and dark grey for the head. And some flesh tones for the eraser. I paint the background, stipple on some light texture and highlights before bringing it together with the contrast glaze. I use contrast on the buttons as well. I hit the base and the rim and that's how all the stitches done. Not as cute, I know, I know. And that's all our heroes done. I'm quite happy with the result. Didn't take that long, looks great. I feel like I achieved that soft, cuddly look I was after. So that's it for this painting session. I hope you found it useful. For the next one, I'll be painting the bosses. But in the meantime, I gotta go to a zero G yoga class on Gibberim 5. So until then, I hope you stay adventurous and that you keep painting. Cause painting is cool.